Here we go. Okay, Monica, over to you. Can you see my full screen? Yes, I can. Yes. Awesome. Okay, great. And I think with that, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm going to try to periodically, again, try periodically to check the chat to see if I'm buffering, to see if anything's going on. Nicole, if you think I'm buffering too much, uh, unmute, let me know, and I can try and repeat certain parts. My goal today is to get through this presentation with enough time for questions. So the other piece of that is I want questions, lots of questions. So write them down, get pen and paper, let's get ready. Today, we are going to close out the week talking about perfecting your visual resume. So question mark for everybody is what's your visual resume? Huh, okay, we're gonna get there. But three things I want you to be able to get today. So number one is I want you to know what visual resume is. It's very important. I want you to know why visual resume is important. So we're gonna do the what and the why. And then I'm going to do a piece of the how, which is give you know-how to evaluate and hopefully perfect your visual resume. So three things I'm trying to accomplish with you today. Now, before I do that, I like to tell people who I am just so that you can get a sense of who's in the room, who's talking to you. And it's a little bit hard for me sometimes to kind of talk about myself. I'm sure we all have a little bit of difficulty with that. But I think what is most important on this page is that you know that I am a lover of bacon, cereal, wine, cashmere, capsule collections, great skincare and laughter. I think that's the most important thing. So at the end of the day, I think what you should get ready to take away here is, sure, we're gonna perfect your resume, but this is a woman who knows her bacon and her wine. And that's actually probably most important. And with that, let's jump in. Perfecting your visual resume. Before we start, we're gonna take 60 seconds. Everyone with me, 60 seconds. I'm actually gonna put it, I'm gonna time it out. Hold on a second. I'm gonna time us out. I want 60 seconds on the clock. And here's what we're going to do. Give me one second, go. I want you to close your eyes and envision your perfect outfit. Close your eyes and envision your perfect outfit. Whatever that outfit may be, um, it can be for any occasion. We're talking about whether it's work, whether it's weekend, whether it's girls weekend, whether it is sitting at home relaxing, in home entertaining, it doesn't even matter. Just think and envision your most perfect outfit. That perfect outfit is the outfit that makes you smile. It's the outfit that maybe makes you sing a line or two in a song. What's up? I'm tone deaf, but I sing it anyway. Um, it may make you do a two-step or it might just have you outright dancing. Whatever it is, it's that outfit. Just think, what is that perfect outfit? Hold on to it, grab it. That is 60 seconds. Think about that most perfect outfit. Again, 60 seconds. Okay. Why is that your favorite or your most perfect outfit? Whatever it is you grabbed, whatever it is you thought about, whatever it is you were envisioning in your mind, why is that your perfect outfit? Guess what? I am almost sure that there were probably 200 plus, and it Whoever, however many people signed up, I mean, we've got, I think, 11 folks on the call right now. I am certain there were 11 different outfits. But what you probably loved about the perfect outfit that you envisioned was the color or the pattern, or it could have been just the general fit or, quite frankly, how much you paid for it. It's always a win when we get something, you know, that we think is, like, awesome and we didn't pay a lot for it. Or it could be that revenge outfit from a previous partner that you put on now and you're like, I look like a goddess in this thing. Whatever it is, um, whatever it is you love, there is a reason why you love it. 
And the reason and the look could be huge. I mean, it could span a lot of different options, but whether or not, and whoever I'm presenting to at any time, doesn't even matter the, what the outfit is, here's what it really comes down to. There are really plus or minus hmm, just a few reasons why you're gonna love that outfit. Stay with me. Just a few reasons why you're gonna love that outfit. Your favorite outfit summed up in five options. Number one, you love the outfit because it kind of put you in your element perhaps. You loved it because it made you feel sexy or confident or powerful or maybe just completely natural and relaxed. Think about it. Again, go back to the beginning, those 60 seconds and envision that outfit and think about why it was your favorite outfit, what it did for you in terms of feeling. Okay, stay with me now. Is everyone with me? I hope you're raising your hands and saying, yes, you are with me. Just a couple of reasons. Now, here's what I want you to know. And this is why I'm laying groundwork for explaining what your visual resume is. Here's the deal. Your visual resume is actually a feeling that tells the world about you. It's how you show up in the world. And when we say how you show up in the world, that world can be anybody, right? Colleagues, friends, partners, but it's their perception of you. So pause for a second. Let's be clear about the definition of a visual, visual resume. Your visual resume is actually a feeling that tells the world about you. It's how you show up to the world and it's their perception of you. So coming in, here's the translation. How you feel on the inside, remember, go back to feeling powerful or sexy or natural or confident, how you feel in the world is what they see. That's right, pause on that. How you feel on the inside is really what they see. And think about that, it's true. On the day where you find it almost impossible to get up and, I don't know, go in your closet, find something, you're just like, I am dragging today. I don't know if it's coffee, I don't know if I need a green juice. I'm, I'm crushing it today, like this is hard. Chances are that shows up in your posture, in your attitude, in your voice, in your energy. It's what other people see. So again, if I go back to that visual resume really quick, it is a feeling. It tells the world about you. And at the end of the day, how you feel on the inside is, guess what? What they see. But here's the beauty of this. Guess what? I am talking to at least 12 power players. I am talking to grown women who understand how to take charge. And that, in my mind, means that, quite frankly, this is your world. You are in control. You have the ability to tell people what you're about. You have the ability to influence how people perceive you, and you have the ability, quite frankly, to control what people see. Again, for a second, pause, jet back to those 60 seconds when you thought of that most perfect outfit. Again, whether it was that it made you feel powerful or sexy or relaxed or natural or confident, um, you have the ability to tell the world exactly what they should see, how they should perceive you, and what you are about. So quite frankly, unlike a lot of stuff that we don't have control over today, guess what? You've got the power here today. And that's what I want you to remember. So here's where we're going. Three things I want you to get to agree with me, okay? Number one, if you can believe that your mood 
your attitude, your posture can change depending on what you wear. And if I can get you also to believe that your most confident and most powerful self shows up when you look good and you feel good. And if I can get you to believe that you have the power to control what you wear, guess what? Then you believe in the concept of visual resume. So three things you need to believe. Your mood, attitude, posture, change, depending on what you're wearing. When I'm in a pair of jeans, I am slumming it, I'm cool, I'm relaxed. That looks and feels completely different from when I'm in a fitted dress and in heels, I'm standing different, I'm going to enunciate differently, I'm going to feel differently. If I can get you to believe that, if I can get you to believe again, your most confident self shows up when you feel good and you look good. When you're looking good, when you're ready to rock, it changes your attitude, it changes how you feel. Um, and if you can believe that you have the power to control what you wear, it's your closet, then you believe in a visual resume, which means you should only have three questions for me. Got it? Uh-oh, wait a sec, there we go. You should have only three questions for me. Question number one is easy. This is really the foundation of my presentation to you today. Why does my visual resume matter then? This is easy. Because what people see influences what they think. Small, simple, but powerful. What people see influences what they think. Here's this guy. What words come to mind? I don't know about you, when I see him, I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know, it's okay, he's not bad. Um, yeah, I don't know, he's just, you know, maybe not totally together, he looks okay. I would say, eh, nothing great, right? And then when I see this guy, I'm thinking, Psh, all right, this guy's got it going on, this is a businessman, he's sharp, he's together, he's confident, he's got a little savvy. What do you think? Here's the thing, it's the same guy, but what you see influences what you think. How he looks changes what you think of him. Simple, small example, but very real. So when I think of question one, which is why does this matter? This why is easy. It matters and your visual resume matters because in spite of the fact that 54% of your first impression is based on how someone looks and 92% of your first impression is nonverbal, here's the thing. Your first impression is super quick. But as, fat, as quick as that first impression is, guess what? it lasts a really long time. So when you ask me, Monica, why does your visual resume matter? Because I know that what people see affects or influences what they think. Okay, are you guys with me? Hopefully you're with me. I hope we've got hands up in the chat. Everyone send out a quick yes if you're with me. Let's see. All right, I got one yes. All right, I got a yes. I got, oh, I got two yeses. Okay, good. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. You're with me. Stay with me here. Thank you very much, Elena. That's exactly right. Why it matters. So my question to you is, are you ready? Can we agree that your visual resume is important? Everyone said yes so far. Excellent. So that easily takes us to question number two. And that's probably one of the more important questions. And that's why we're here today. Okay, pen and paper. How do I create my visual resume? The entire presentation is called perfecting your visual resume. I had to lay groundwork for you to explain why your visual resume is really important. Now the question becomes, okay, it's important, Monica. How do I get it? We got four steps, ladies, just four steps 
to perfecting your visual resume. Pen and paper, everybody, pen and paper. I'll even give you 10 seconds to make sure you've got it. Make sure you've got ink in there. If you use a pencil, that's cool. 10 seconds. And then we're gonna dive into how to create your visual resume. And even as we dive into this, I'm asking you, write down your questions in the side, in the column, write down your questions. At the end, ask me whatever it is. Hey, is it black pants versus navy pants? Are floral prints good? What should I be doing? Is it skirts over dresses? I don't know, pants over skirts, whatever it is. Think about that. All right, four steps to perfecting your visual resume. Is everyone with me? I'm gonna assume that's a yes. Step one, this one's easy. You have to know your purpose and know your style. Now pause on that because it is really kind of the key to your visual resume knowing your style and your purpose. Here's how I like to think of this. Whether it's Google Maps, Waze, whatever app it is you use, it is impossible to get anywhere unless you type in a destination. Step one simply says, you must know your destination before we can map out how it is we get there. Does that make sense? How often do you get in the car to go somewhere or even jump on the Metro to go somewhere and you're like, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna ride. It's gonna be really hard to get you there, right? So this is about knowing your destination. And see, here's what happens. Um, most of us will go into our closets and we're like, oh my God, this is terrible. What is it that I need to wear today? <sighs> You'll open your closet. Some of you will have walk-in closets, which are very nice. And you can walk in your closet and you say, what is it oh, I can wear today? I'm not even sure. Stop. That's the wrong approach here, everybody. Your goal should never be to walk into your closet or open the door to your closet or pull out the drawer to your clothes and say, what am I supposed to wear? No, get it out of your vocabulary. What you should ask is, what do I want to say today? What do I want to say today? Again, knowing your definition, knowing your destination knowing that you want to always be powerful. You want to come off as confident. Maybe you want to come off as feminine. Maybe you want to always come off as polished and put together. That's how you approach going into your closet to create an image or a look that is aligned with your brand. So step one, this is critical. Know your style and your purpose. To know that is at the end of the day, know your destination. Is everyone with me? Let me hear a, um, put a number one in the box if you're with me. I got a number one, I got a number one. I got a number one, I got a couple more number ones. I'm liking it, excellent, excellent, stay with me. We are not quite at the halfway point, but almost there. Point number two, step number two, are you ready? This one is great. Edit ruthlessly and continuously. Um, I think it's Nathan Morris says to edit your life frequently and ruthlessly. Guess what? It's your masterpiece. This is it. When anyone looks back on you, what do they look back on? Oh my God, she was always running around. She was always kind of, you know, crazy, just kind of had a lot of stuff going on, never really organized. Um, she was really sweet, but just always all over the place. You must edit ruthlessly and continuously. Um, and, and let me pause on this one. And this one is important because it's almost, it's like prepping soil if anyone does any planting. There is psychology behind editing your closet. <gasps> yes, 
process edit. There is psychology behind editing your closet. Editing your closet is the ideal of not just um, making space. You can't get anything into something if it's already crowded. The ideal of editing is to make space for something. Take something out so that you can put something new and awesome back in. Yes. The second piece of psychology and why we talk about editing, at least as fashion stylists and wardrobe stylists, is it's about uncluttering the mind. I know most of you, I'm going to go out on a limb and knock on wood, I don't know where it is, that says, all of you are familiar with this idea with a cluttered desk or a cluttered office makes for a cluttered mind. It's the exact same thing when we talk about your closet. When you can go into a closet and you can't see everything, you're like, I thought there was a black shirt in here. I'm not, ah, not quite sure. That's too much, too much. You have to unclutter your closet to unclutter your mind, to get yourself ready for awesome. At the end of the day, when you can open and expand your mind, when you can know that, hmm, I've got seven pairs of pants, black pants in there, and I really only wear two, so I could probably eliminate the other five. That's right, I said it. You can probably eliminate the other five. Um, it is freeing because what you have left, at least for those seven pairs, is you actually have two pair of pants that you love and that you wear. <gasps> Novel concept. You have two pair of pants left that you wear and you love and that fit you. Why have seven? So the others you can donate, give them to your frenemy, someone that you like but don't really like, or whatever the case may be, donate them. Um, can sign them, whatever the option is, but you must edit ruthlessly because at the end of the day, you really don't get a second chance to make a first impression. When you walk out the house and you are whatever it is you've chosen to wear, because remember, you're powerful enough to choose what it is you want to wear and what it is you want to say, guess what? After that, you don't get a second chance and a do-over to be like, oh my God, I just saw somebody. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hi again. Doesn't work like that. Edit your life ruthlessly and continuously. So we've got two down, which means we're actually now officially halfway through the presentation. So step three, I hope you guys have got pen and paper. Um, if you're with me on step three, type three, type three. I want to see some threes popping in here. I got to see a couple threes. I see a couple threes. Yes, got some threes. That's what I'm saying. So step three here. This is a big one. This is create a budget. Oh, yes, I said it. I said it. I said those nasty words. Um, in my book, The Creative's Closet, I talk about this idea and I walk you through how to actually create a budget. It is wonderful to actually understand what you have to spend because I am not advocating that you go blow your uh, flat money or that you go blow your mortgage or that you go blow your rent money. I am suggesting to you that guess what? Style and fashion is really isn't about spending a lot. It's about spending wisely and spending on the right items. 70 awesome pieces in a closet is better than 200 pieces where you're just like, oh, I don't even know, I have nothing to wear. And I know every last one of you can feel me on that because the average woman has 103 pieces of clothes in her closet, yet, finds it difficult to get dressed in the morning. Let me repeat that to you. The average woman has 103 pieces of clothes in her closet, but finds it difficult to get dressed in the morning. And all that says to me is guess what? You don't have the right clothes. You got a lot, but you don't have the right clothes. So the ideal is to create a budget so that you know what you have to spend. 
again, it doesn't take a lot, but if it's an awesome pair of dark pants, if it's a power dress that you need, let's figure out what your budget is. Let's figure out where you should be. And then we can go from there. All right, is everyone with me? Type four, if you're with me, type four, if you're with me, let's see. I got a four, I got one four. All right, I got fours, I got fours. All right, all right. You guys, we're bringing this home. We're bringing this home. Stay with me. The day is almost over. Step four, and this is it. Guess what? I'm having every last one of you become a list queen. That's right, become a list queen. So go back to step one. Step one was this ideal of um, creating a destination. You gotta figure out what your style is. You gotta know what you're aiming for. And then I talked to you about step two. Step two is about creating and prepping yourself. Make room. We've gotta go in the closet and we've gotta edit. I call it style realignment. Most of you may call, call it closet editing. You gotta do some editing. Step three, I said, okay, create a budget. Let's know what we're working with here because now we've got a destination. Now we've got some room in the closet and now it's time. Step four is to become a list queen. You have got to become a list queen. So create a list of your badass basics. You're gonna create three different lists. Your badass basics are, think about it, um, in my book, The Creator's Closet, um, I have a list of 17 badass basics. And these are basics that maybe you spend a little bit more on because you're going to wear them more frequently. Um, some of the badass basics, let's just take a pair of nice, dark, straight leg pants. You know, you may feel that little burning in your chest when you go to buy it. Um, that burning in your chest is not acid reflux. Um, it's not because you've eaten spicy food. It's simply that maybe you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm spending. It's okay. This is a piece that you're going to own for many years. You're going to wear multiple times in a given week. And your cost per wear is going to become pennies on the dollar. So your first list are your badass basics. Then we're going to talk about creating a list of your elevated essentials. Your elevated essentials are those other pieces that kind of fill in the blanks, um, but maybe start to add a, and round out the closet. A good example is a nice moto jacket. A great moto jacket, if you're in the U.S., depends on where you are, a great moto jacket is what's going to take you from late summer into early fall. It's going to take you from late winter into early spring. Your moto jacket is what you're going to put on with a nice slip dress or a slip dress to just give you a little edge, or maybe it's going to round out a cute jeans and a pair of heels. It's that jacket. That jacket you're going to be able to use multiple ways, um, again, to elevate the basics that you're wearing. That moto jacket plus your basic great jeans and a white tee, and you're doing something completely different. So that's your second list. Your third list are personality pieces. These are the fun pieces. Um, Nicole made the point to mention What's the print that we would see in your closet? For me, it's florals. So you're gonna find that in spite of the fact that navy and camel are the bases, base colors in my closet, um, when I go to the store to find personality pieces, I am always looking for a print that has one of my base colors in it. And that way I know when I get home, I got something to go with it. I have a closet that can have a conversation with itself. So we have covered four steps. And these are four steps, simple steps that will get you to perfecting your visual resume. So we now discussed the how, um, we discussed the why. Um, and so it makes sense to me that you may now say, so what? Great, Monica, you went and told me to do this budgeting. I got these four steps down. I've went and figured out what my style is, what my purpose is. I've gone and done the editing. So what do I do now? What's the benefit? Why are you having me do this? So remember at the very beginning, I said there were three questions you should ask. The first question we covered, which was why is it important? We talked about that. The second was 
how do I make the visual resume? How do I do it? And we've just done that in four steps. And the third question is, so what? <laughs> and so what's the benefit? And I like to think of the benefit is now you're going to have jealous friends. You're going to have new enemies because you're looking so good. You're going to get quizzical stares. I'm just joking, you guys. It's not the benefit. Just a little humor at the end of the day. Those are not your benefits. Don't worry. I hope you guys were laughing with me. Okay. <laughs> your real benefits are going to be better posture. You are going to have a closet that can have a conversation with yourself. It is going to be a less stressful morning for you when you wake up and you go into your closet because you're not asking, what do I wear today? You're asking, what do I want to say today? Today, I want to say, ah, you know what? I'm laid back, relaxed. I've got work to do. You can pick out this piece. You can pick out this piece and go. You're going to get more time back in your morning, whether that's going to be yours or maybe your partner's or your children's. I don't know, but you're going to get more time back in the morning. It's going to make for easier and lighter travel. I love this one. One of my sayings that I always um, that I always give to people is overpacking is a symptom of a cluttered closet. Oh, I said it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You all know, I'm certain there are some of you who go to pack for travel and they're just like, ah, I'm not sure, put this in there, put this in there, oh, grab this. One of these pieces will work. No. Now, with a closet that has a conversation with itself, you now can put one, two, three, four, five, six pieces in, know how they work together, know that they do work together, know that they're still aligned with your style, know that they are saying exactly what you need them to say, knowing that you love them and you're ready to go. You are now more confident. You are utilizing the clothes that are in your closet. The average woman only uses 20% of her closet. <gasps> That is a shame. 20% of her closet. Oh, you guys, it's killing me. So now you've got these four steps. You've got some benefits. I'm telling you, you're going to be more clear. You're going to be more focused. You're going to know exactly what it is you want to look like. You can go into your closet of clothes that you love, right? And be ready. But let me jump on my soapbox because there's one more benefit. And I actually kind of think it's two benefits, but I'll list it as one and you can tell me. Um, I am a huge proponent of sustainability. When you can align your style with your closet to create a visual resume that has clear messaging, oops, not clear messaging, but clear messaging about who you are and what you're about, you will find, and guess what? Less is more. You don't need a huge closet with a lot of stuff because it only takes a little bit to make an impact you will find that to achieve even better results, you're going to spend less money on the wrong stuff and you're going to have more of the right stuff. Oh my God, I can't envision a bigger, almost better benefit. We deserve to help and actually we're kind of obligated to help Mother Earth with this. So this ideal of being able to use less is very big for me, but it's also very important as you think about your closet. Remember I said, you've got to start pulling stuff out. You've got to make space. You've got to unclutter your space, unclutter your mind, get ready to be clearer and more focused. Um, the benefit of all this, again, is not just Again, better posture because you're feeling good, you're looking good, you're more confident. It's also going to be, you know, you get more time in your day, so you're not running out of the house like, ah, right? All that, it comes together if you can nail those four critical steps. And if you can do that, guess what? You have now 
figured out how to perfect your visual resume. And I'm done. So I am opening it up to questions. I want questions, please. I have a ton. Are there questions that we have? Ladies, I finished this up so that you could shoot them out at me. I want the questions. Give them all to me. I definitely have one. If anyone else has one, you can start typing in the chat. Uh, oh, yes. Julia has also one. Okay, I'm going to go first, then we go to Julia. So my question is, when we, so let's say we figured out, okay, this is what I want to say. Mm -hmm. I have searched my closet. There's nothing in there that says that at the moment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know, sometimes the idea of, or oh, this might look nice, or I might like that, is then completely different, you know, it might feel good in the store when I try it on, but then when I actually have to go wear it, then it's just not right. So how can I, you know, when I, like, how can I better know if that idea in my head will actually turn out to be a good one? Okay, that that's great. And I think there are two pieces to that. Um, I think the first piece is you have to be clear about what you want to say. Mm -hmm. What you want to say doesn't change that often. So here's the thing. If what you want to say is I am feminine, I am business focused, I am fun loving, I am colorful, I am powerful. When you go to put that piece on, you should be looking in the mirror, whether it's home or at a what do you call and say, does this piece say powerful, fun loving? Does this piece say that I am put together? Does this piece say that there's another piece at home that goes with it um, to create consistent messaging? Um, if you can't say yes to that, that shouldn't be a piece you own. You shouldn't own it. And I am clear that there are a ton of us, because it's a great question, Nicole, there are a ton of us that will go in and you'll put on something and you're like, mm, well, it's okay. I mean, it might work. It, it's not bad. What? Oh, if you think it's not bad, it's eh, okay. It mm, might work. What does someone else think? <laughs> if you're not a hundred percent confident that it's an awesome piece, what are you going to leave someone else to think about? This is this becomes clearer and it becomes easier if you again know your destination. Here's what it is I want to say. Here's how it is I want to look on a regular basis. Um, and then it's being honest. I mean, you know, this is a a bit of I don't know what you, what you believe in, but this is a bit of a come to Jesus moment. You know, I am often in the store with clients and they're like, it looks really good. I'm like, is that what you want? And I'm like, if it looks good, then you're fine. I'm saying it does, Monica, it looks really good. I mean, I know that it may like flatten my butt or I know it may make me look wide. Okay, stop, stop. Is your goal to buy a piece that flattens your butt and makes you look wide? If it's not, put it back. We feel so pr much pressure to get stuff. And it doesn't take stuff. It just takes the right pieces. So. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got ready. some other stuff going on in the chat. I can't get it all. Yeah. Oh, so definitely, Julia, why don't we... Um, oh, Julia, is that your question that you put in the chat? Yes. Julia's question is, what advice would you give to early stage professionals specifically creating a mark and developing our careers and all with the pressure of trying not to look too young, but also to show, um, but also to, uh oh, I don't know. Show to show something. the expected energy and freshness. Oh. Oh, okay, good. I was like, I didn't see the rest of the question. So I think the big part of the question is what advice do you give to early stage professionals? First of all, my advice to early stage professionals is like a big 
kind of shout out and a kudos because you have an opportunity to do this right. You have an opportunity to waste less money than seasoned professionals who have closets full of clothes and don't wear them. So you're actually a step ahead of the game already. Um, but my advice is to nail those badass basics. Those basics are those pieces that are gonna be aligned with who you are, what your brand is. If you can get those basics, um, then you are in a better position. Here's what happens though. Nobody wants basics. Everyone's like, oh my God, I wanna do this. I wanna have this flourish. I wanna vavoom, I wanna do this. And what happens is you start to buy pieces that are not the basics. The basics are there for a reason. It's the foundation of what you build on. So my advice as an early stage professional is nail and live by those basics. Those basics will get you through anything. And I'm speaking from experience as someone who is sitting in a boardroom with four older Caucasian gentlemen who are, you know, 60 plus who are CEOs. And I'm this teeny little girl who's this little spitfire at 22. Um, you do have to credential yourself. So no, I didn't walk in there with floral prints. I walked in there with a great suit, but my great suit was navy, not black. My suit was a two buttoned that had a a uh, double cross and buttoned on the side. It was a skirt that hit me right at the knee. So it wasn't eating up all of the real estate so I could still look and appear tall. It was shoes that were comfortable enough for me to walk in because I was in a hospital and working with um, CEOs. Um, you got to know those little pieces and get those basics down. So that blue suit got me through so much. But it also said, I'm here, I'm a professional, I'm feminine, but I also know my stuff. So there's a balance in that, but I will always come back to, and I will 100% rely on, even again, in my book, 17 Badass Basics. Get them, know them, live by them. Yeah, Elena actually asked uh, if you have more examples for basics, but you just mentioned like a, like a plain suit but that fits you well. I would assume a few t-shirts and you also um, mentioned earlier those straight pants. So the 17 basics, and I'm going to wrap off a couple. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to know them all because age is what it is. Um, and so they are a great structured tote bag. They are a dark colored pair of straight leg pants. They are a baseline, two different types of jeans. And I kind of explain that in the book. There is a fitted blazer. I say a dark color blazer. I am a fan of Navy. I live in Washington, DC. Navy is what rules this town. Um, we're extremely puritanical and we're extremely conservative. So Navy is the color. Um, I tell everyone never to get black as your first suit. It looks like a pallbearer or a waiter. Never. Um, so Navy should be your first suit. Um, I would tell you that a fabulous white button down shirt, that fabulous white button down shirt will take you into the weekend with a pair of shorts. It will take you on travel with a cute jacket over it. It'll take you to a business meeting with a blazer. It will take you on the weekend where you can tie it in the front and put it on a, with a pair of jeans. A Fabulous white button down shirt is a must have. Um, it is a pair of basic power pumps in a nude or a dark color. It is a pair of pointy toe flats. That's seven. I've gotten half. And again, there are more. But I was like, <laughs> I've, gotten, I've gotten half. But those are some of those badass basics that I was talking about. Let's see. I've got a couple more. I struggle with what to wear to teach, balancing authority and approachability in the lecture theater. Any tips? Oh my God, Terry, yes. Okay, so you're a teacher. Uh, here's, the, here's the thing. Number one for you is gotta be comfort. Um, when you are uncomfortable, people see it. That's the bottom line. 
you tugging at your shirt, you pulling something where you shouldn't be pulling, you trying to lift up your pants as you're walking because they're too big. Um, those are never good things. So you've got to be comfortable. So fit is going to matter to you. I'm going to come back to you and tell you your badass basics need to be a little different. So your badass basics need to be some ankle length, stretchy black pants. Um, your badass basic that you need to focus on may be um, not just a fitted blazer, but maybe a fitted dark blazer that has a little print to it that gives you a little zhuzh. Your part of your badass basics should be work tees, but your work tees should be nice v-necks that have a little bit of looseness so that you can wear them and layer them. So again, I come back to, it's still those same 17 badass basics. They're just going to look a little different. A basic work tee for you to me is truly like a nice tee that has a modal, um, maybe a modal composition versus someone that is in a law office, maybe their basic tee is a little more of a camisole that's a little bit silkier and a little bit dressier. It looks and feels different, but that's still your basics. So you're gonna need it in cream. You're gonna need it in black. You're gonna need it in a nice blush color. Those are your basics. You can never not use them and you'll find that they fill in a lot of blanks. Um, I hope that helps. I'm gonna keep going. I got six new messages. Okay, I gave a couple of examples of bad X, some basics. Um, Julia, and I, I'm sure I'm pronouncing your name wrong because you've got the little uh, checks at the, the <laughs> a tilde at the top. I've been changing places so much in the past five years that my closet and I, um, I've compressed is 2.23 kilograms of luggage bags. Oh my gosh, hard to visualize and organize most times. Packing and unpacking. Um, so I'm not quite sure what your question is. Um, but I, help me with your question. No, sorry. I, I was kicked out and now I'm back again, but oh, <laughs> thanks for joining recording. Us. Um, I think your question is really around, you said it's hard to visualize and organize. And I'm going to tell you that for sure, you're going to find it difficult to nail down that editing piece if you can't see everything. So maybe it's one day throwing everything on the bed and seeing and trying it all on. Cause you're again, 2.23 kilograms. I know you're overseas. I have no idea. I am from the backwards US. And so I can't make that conversion. It's two large <laughs> suitcases. That's two 50 pound suitcases. Oh yeah. my gracious. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> And is, and is everything in compressed into those two 50 pound suitcases? Uh oh, she's not answering. Can you add, Ju Julia, can you ask what your question is so I can help you answer it? Hey, okay. can you hear? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, great. Thank you, Monica. No, it was more about what, what, what tip would you give if I cannot visualize it properly, but you already answered. It was just when you're changing places so much, you I don't have the space, as you were saying, you know, to really got to close it and visualize everything. So if you have any help for this kind of traveler life. Right. And so my advice to you is, I know this is going to sound weird, is actually very similar to everyone that has a closet. First of all, when you organize your clothes, um, get them out of the bag, organize them by function. Um, so organize them by work, weekend, and maybe going out. Start with those three categories. When you can organize them by work, weekend, and going out, it will be easier. It will still be easier for you to put it together because again, your mind is really intelligent, right? Even if you don't think it is, your mind remembers a lot. So now when you go into your bag, you can lift up the 150 pound bag and be like, this section is all my work stuff. So this is what I have to wear. And then you can rifle and move through those pieces. Um, kind of putting all your shirts together doesn't help 
if you're getting ready for work when in reality, there's only two shirts in there that work for work. So divide it by function is my advice to you. Um, it will make getting dressed much easier. Okay. Um, other questions? Unmute yourself, ask a question. I am here. I am here to give it to you. Um, I've, I've got a question. I've kind of struggled to verbalize it, which is why I haven't um, written it down, but I'm a, I'm a field geologist. So our, our basics are Birkenstocks and socks, um, yes. which, you know, works for us, uh, but not for everyone else. Um, so I guess part of my question is how, do, do we do this every day? Because that sounds exhausting. <laughs> okay. Like, you, you, yeah. You're not no. doing it every day. You're definitely not doing it. Ju yes. Julia laughed. She thought it was hilarious. It's not something you do every day. It should, okay. first of all, it will, it'll, it's a little hard work to start, but I'm going to be honest, a little hard work is what you need for the payoff. So, but it's not something you do every day. Let me run through high level the scenario here. It is a closet packed full of clothes. It is you doing one weekend, and this is one weekend, commit to it, going through being like, okay, between your drawers, between your closet, maybe it's in those two 50 pound suitcases. It's saying what is work related versus what is weekend related versus what is going out related. So for you, Elena, your work beyond your Birkenstocks and your socks may be jeans, they may be a fitted pair of pants that are stretchy so that you can move to and fro, stand up, get down, um, whatever that is. Tell me what you wear to work. Figure out that wardrobe, okay? Um, after you've gotten those three buckets, and again, let's just focus on work, it's now going through being like, okay, I know for your work, you've got four pair of pants in there that are super stretchy. You got one in there that you're just like, okay, there's a little hole coming on this one, but I'm going to keep it because I don't know. I just love the pants. It's great. Awesome. I'm going to keep these. I don't necessarily wear them and I don't love them, but they're a great backup. Um, and so I'm just going to keep them. There are really two that you may rotate through regularly. My advice is chuck the other two. You will never, ever go to buy a new third pair that are awesome until you get rid of those two. Right, That's yeah. a guarantee. I will guarantee you that. So you got to exhale. If it means taking a stiff drink. I don't know what that stiff drink is. Mine is Jack, whatever it is. Take it and be like, okay, who don't I like? Awesome. Gift them those two pairs of pants. And be like, I am done. And now you've got two pair of pants that you actually wear. Now you can say to yourself, do I actually need a third pair for work? Or do these two work? Because I love to do laundry and every Friday I'm going to go clean those two. For me, heck no. I'm going to need at least four pair because I'm not, no love for laundry, right? So I'm going to need four so that I can get through at least the next two weeks. Um, but those are the types of things that you can answer. And when you're done, you're done. It's finished. You've got your two awesome pair of pants. Again, just one example, mm -hmm. but you're ready. Yeah. So, well, it, and, and getting up in the morning, it becomes less exhausting because you're going in and you're like, if it's seven, if it's 12 items, you're like, I got 12 great items. They all fit. They all work. None of them have holes. None of them require that I wear an extra long shirt because I don't know, it makes my butt look flat, but you got 12 pieces that work. I don't think that's, that's a quick five minutes to get dressed because you got 12 pieces to choose from. Get them, get out the door. But yeah, excellent. Thank you. That's excellent advice. Uh, just a quick follow-up if, if people don't mind. Um, with those 12 pieces, what are your thoughts on sort of creating uh, like a personal uniform. I did this as a grad student because I am exceptionally lazy uh, and had uniforms all through high, you know, elementary and high school and just, 
I didn't have to think about it. I just sort of put it on and I left. So I will give you a virtual hug um, and say 100%. Um, people, my clients don't know it and I don't tell them, but I create uniforms for them. And I've actually now started to create uniform cheat sheets. Um, so again, you think about your, I'll give an example of a client who's the CEO of a tech company. Um, and so for him, I created a cheat sheet that is high powered business meetings, working in the office. Um, he calls it date night um, and like two other things. I'm like, here's your cheat sheet for your high powered meetings. It's always gonna be a suit. You, and keep in mind, I've already done your closets. You only have three suits in there. So it's gonna be one of three things, hello. You're always gonna have a shirt, a button down shirt. You're never gonna wear a tie because you hate them. You're always gonna have a shoe that goes with the belt. Your closet's already together, so we're done. It's a wrap. Whenever it's a high powered meeting, you already know what you're gonna wear. His toss up is that second category, which is just working in the office. He's like, the office is casual, it's lazy. I don't know what to wear. I don't wanna look business. I don't wanna look too formal. I don't, I get it, I get it, I get it. Here are your two uniforms for that. It is always going to be a pair of relaxed pants that have a button up, or if you're cool, it's always going to be a t-shirt and you're going to layer it with a sport or a knit blazer, and you're going to have these types of jeans. That's it. One of the two uniforms. Wear it in different colors, switch up the jeans if you want, switch up the belt, knock yourself out, go crazy with the t-shirt selection, but that's it. Uniforms are a godsend. They are. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's super helpful. No worries. No worries. Other questions? Did I miss some? I don't want to miss any questions. Did I miss anything, Nicole? Did you catch anything that I may have missed? If anyone wants to ask a question, please unmute yourself. Yeah. I didn't see anything else. Um... Maybe one last question from me then is, um, are we, do we sometimes need to grow into the new clothes? Like, you know, it's like when we, let's say, I don't know. So I, I talked about this with you before, but you know, mm -hmm. I was so used to the, the hoodies and the sneakers and the lab coat and the, as you know, even though I might have liked, and I now do like, you know, also wearing other things. Mm -hmm. It's like, it definitely, you know, it's like I needed to grow into it and I needed to learn to get comfortable. Does it make sense? You know, it's like, I'm, it's, it's not that I'm uncomfortable. It just, it, it just was uh, unusual for me. Yep. Yep. That's a, that is a good question. And I think there's one more message. I don't know what it is. Um, a couple more. Um, here's my thought on that. And it's two schools of thought. Um, my first school of thought is you have to be honest with how you are as a person. Um, but my gut is always to figure out where it is you wanna be and get you there quickly. Here's the thing. Um, if you love those sweats and you love the hoodies, but maybe instinctively you're like, yeah, I do like, you know, dress slacks and, you know, a nice blouse. I mean, it's nice, but this is comfortable and I love this. We need to take that away from you so that you can actually wear the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, I find that if what you're transitioning to is equally as awesome. Wearing it means you're getting compliments. It means you're getting people who are like, oh, you look really nice today. That's different. Okay, cool. And I've never ever seen a person shy away from a compliment. I just haven't. Um, so my gut is take the leap, you know, dip your toe in, maybe just walk yourself down to the deep end and try it. Um, if you must, I've done commando closet cleanouts where I'm just like, okay, you're not doing this fast enough. Let me actually take these pieces out for you. <laughs> and lest you be naked, I bet you will try these pieces. On. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, great. So, just a thought. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, okay.
I don't see any other questions in here. Thank you so much, Monica. You're most welcome.